Hello again. And uh, this week, another new location for me where I'll be said we are. Now, I say new location, I've actually, I grew up not far from this area. And uh, so I used to come here when I was a, when I was a kid. I had some friends um, that, that lived in, uh, in the village when I was a child. And, um, but we're, at Abistead, we're in Abistead, just uh, to the south east of uh, Lancaster. It's a beautiful part of the world, actually. A lot of people don't, don't get into this area between, between the A6 and the Trough of Boland, and it is actually a beautiful um, part of the world. It's well worth a, 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 a sort of a bit of an explore if you're, if you're in the area. But here in Abbeyside, we've got, we've got the reservoir, and then we've got this amazing sort of bow-shaped weir that, uh, that, that sort of just runs off down into the River Wire. And, uh, you know, I guess photograph quite a bit does this, uh, does this reservoir, but we don't see too many pictures of it. So um, I thought I'd uh, try and have a go today. We're going to try and do two locations here today. There's, there's this almost classic shot of the, of the half moon of the, uh, of the weir and, and the lake and, and the island. And then there's, uh, I think, just having a scout around, there is another view uh, a little bit further down the, uh, the river, which we'll, we'll come to in a few minutes. So my intention here is, is not to use a neutral density filter. A neutral density filter will slow this water down and create like a blurred effect. But I quite like the, the shapes that are being created in, this, uh, in, in the weir as the water just rolls over the top. So I'm going to try and capture some of those. So I'm going to go for quite a, a fast shutter speed. And then we don't really need to blur the water out because the, the water is super soft and flat anyway. It's a gorgeous evening. The, the wind is, is non-existent. It's nice and still. So actually, we've, we've got a lovely still reservoir here. And then we've got the green of the, um, of, the, of, the, of the trees in the background, which I think will just kind of frame it quite nicely. So as I say, we're going to go for the oxbow of the, um, of the, of the reservoir. We're going to go for the reservoir itself and then just a little bit of island. Now to get the island over there and this, um, and this weir in here, I'm going to use a wide angle lens. So I am using my Tamron uh, 15 to 30 f 2.8 and I'm shooting on about 25 mil. So it is quite wide. It's not too wide because as you can see, I've got my camera quite close to this wall. So if I go too wide, I'll get this wall in the frame and I don't want to do that. And there is a bush just growing down here, which I've um, liberally just given a, a little bit of a trim just to get the, the um, the, the top of the uh, the bush out of the uh, out of the frame as well. So we've we've kind of got this. There's nothing in the foreground too much under this this art that's going to come in. Setting wise on the camera, um, uh, I am shooting on uh, manual, obviously uh, a fiftieth of a second, ISO 100 and f8. So some very simple settings here on the camera. The only other thing that I've got on the front, and you can probably see that I have got a filter on here. I've got a, um, a polarizing filter, a, a landscape polarizing filter made by um, Nissi. And, uh, and what the purpose of that is, is just to bring out a little bit more detail in those clouds and, uh, and then again in the water itself, just to bring out uh, just a touch of detail. So let's take that picture and see what, uh, and see what we get. It's all set up, it's all focused, and I'm focusing literally on, on the corner of the, um, not the corner, but the, the, the furthest um, right of the, uh, of the weir. There we go, that's that picture taken. Let's have a quick look at that. See, see if we achieved what we, what we wanted to achieve. And I think we have. I've managed to, to just freeze that water a little bit so I get those, those lovely sort of shapes that, uh, that the weir is making. And uh, you know, a bit of detail in the sky. I, I, I quite like the, uh, the fact we can see almost around the island and we can see the, the, the two converging lines driving into the, uh, into the weir that's, that's actually on the, on the bottom left. So I, I, do, I do quite quite like that image. It's not the most spectacular image I've ever taken, but I, I, do, I do quite like uh, that image. Let's go and have a scout now and see if we can find uh, another location. So we've moved locations now, and um, we've come down from the from the weir and, and down the little trail, across the little bridge, and then we've actually dropped down over some some sort of rocky area into the uh, into the base of the river. And if you come down here, just be really careful because you can get down here, but you, you have got to be super careful, and it is a bit it is a bit tricky. So uh, just be careful. 
what, what I would say is, don't do as I've done. Um, wear appropriate clothing. I've, I've dressed for the office. I've come from the office. So I had a pair of normal shoes and a pair of chinos. And um, that's not the best thing to wear. So a pair of decent boots and something you don't get, mind getting mucked up. But one thing I always carry with me in my, in my bag, because um, they fold up really small, is one of these. And uh, it's just a, uh, a car windscreen protector for the winter. And you can buy them at any petrol station, but they've got a little bit of cushioning. And, uh, and if, you're, if you're sort of sitting and getting quite low to the camera, really useful because you can chuck them on the floor, you can kneel on them, they take the harness out of the rocks uh, to help your knees a little bit, but also stop you getting all, all dirty. And they're only cheap, I think they're about a five or a tenner or something, so uh, don't really cost anything. When they get all mucked up, you throw them away and get another one. So what we've got here is, as I, as I, tried, as I sort of imagined earlier, we've got, um, we've got the first weir at the top, rolling down into this second weir which has kind of got this waterfall thing in the middle and then we've got this, um, this almost like an op a bowl area and uh, taking a picture of that in isolation would be would be pretty boring because one thing that photographs need for me is, uh, is a little bit of foreground interest and the reason I've sort of come here is because I've just got these rocks just in front of me so they created just a little bit of interest in the foreground and then we've got that, that, that bit of water and then the two, uh, the, the two pieces of, of, of waterfall. And the reason I've come down and I've dropped the tripod quite low, you might have noticed pre previously I had a, a little bit of an unusual uh, tripod configuration because I had one leg on the, on the wall, I'm trying to keep the, 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 the top plate as level as possible. But um, the great thing about tripods is they don't all have to open at the same rate. You can open legs in different rates. And most, of, most tripods will go down nice and low like this. And when you get down nice and low, you are compressing that distance between the foreground and the, and the mid-ground or the, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the background. If I'd have taken this shot stood up from a little bit further away, there'd, been, there'd be a much larger space between the foreground and the, uh, and the waterfall. But by getting low, you kind of move everything a little bit closer together again. And, and, that, and that for me just makes a, a, a slightly more pleasant composition. Now sadly tonight, the light on the, on the sky has gone. There's, there's nothing up there. It, it changed in the few moments it took us to, uh, to walk down to uh, down to this uh, riverbed and it's a bit of a shame because it's just it's just got grayness in the in the sky now um, but we're going to see what we can do i've taken off the polarizer i've changed my lens so i don't want such a wide angle this time what i want this time is something a bit tighter so i've gone for my um i've got a nikon lens on this time it's the 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 and i'm shooting at about 35 millimeter um, and that's just enough to kind of get this get this space in there, nice and wide enough, but um, not too much where we've got loads of uh, sort of stuff around the edges that we don't we don't really need. Settings wise, um, I want to kind of make this water go a little bit milky, so I don't need to put a neutral density filter on because it the light has kind of gone a little bit. Arguably, we're a little bit too late. We're into that. Um, we're into that golden hour if we had a decent piece of sun, but we, we haven't. Um, but we've got, we've got about a three second exposure on this if I take the picture at, um, at F10. And that's going to be enough just to, to blur out this water. Not too much. Um, well, we are going to have these white dots kind of in, in, the, in the picture. We can't really get rid of them until we go really, really long. But it should be long enough just to, to make this water just a little bit flatter. ISO, I've dropped that down as well to support a longer shutter speed and the ISO on this one is about F64, sorry, it's 64 ISO. Um, camera is the same, Nikon uh, D850. Right, let's take this picture and, uh, and see what we get. There we go. I pre-focused and I focused on the rock that's just furthest away from me, just in the, just in the foreground. And, uh, and that's given us this picture. Now that picture to me is not, is not amazing. Um, I'd, I'd hope for a bit better. I thought the composition might have been a bit stronger than it is, but it's, it's not. Personally, I think it's a little bit, a little bit boring, but uh, you tell me what you think. I think it's nice that we've got the two waterfalls um, sort of feeding into each other. I think it's good that we've got the foreground interest, but it, it's just not an amazing shot. Um, I always say I'll share the good and the bad. Um, I would love it if anybody could come and take a better picture of this. I'm sure it's not that difficult, um, but please come and have a go and, uh, and share it with us in the future. Well, that's it for this time. Uh, until next time, 
look after yourself and we'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please leave us some comments down below. There's a button just there as well that you can use to, uh, to subscribe to our channel. And uh, if you want to watch some more videos, try these two because uh, they've, uh, they've been picked from our channel that um, hopefully you'll enjoy those. Um, until next time, thank you very much for watching.